four amateur chefs battle it out in a contest where they're cooking... Got one minute left to plate up, and that is the end. ..must be matched by their cunning. I hope this dish is going to be my lifesaver. Good luck with that. I'm trying to get in my head. No, I'm not. Get out of it. Judging their food... Oh, my gosh. ..the notoriously demanding Marco Pierre White. This one makes that one look good, and that was bad. It looks like a crime scene. But there's a sting in the tail. Players face a dilemma. If they think their dish is the worst, they can press their button, eliminate themselves and still leave with money. I should be pressing my button, I made the worst. Henry, I think it's your time. Or mess with their rivals' minds, persuading them to cash out early. If I were you, I'd press the button and go home with some money. We'll see. One of you has pressed the button. If no one chooses to leave, Marco will send the worst cook home. And goodbye to one of you. With nothing. No. In this game of gastronomic poker, who will come out on top and win two and a half grand? I'm very confident this is going to be amazing. The best cook or the most persuasive player? I'm finished! Oh, that's sexy. Oh, it's excellent. It's a horror movie on a plate. I don't want you to go home with no money. I want you to press that button. I'm so not pressing the button. Then the game is on. Our first amateur chef with his eyes on the prize is fund manager Robbie. I hope I have an advantage being Italian because I did grow up in, in, in my grandmother's kitchen. I come from the land of Machiavelli, and uh, if I have to lie to win the competition, I'll do that. But Robbie might have met his match. Mum of three, Amy's overflowing with culinary confidence. My food is really good. It's as high as a five-star restaurant. I should be able to win it. Maybe Amy should watch her back, cos here comes a salesman. Q pharmaceutical rep, Carl. I'd target those competitors which are the stronger cooks, make them think that actually their food isn't as good as they think it is. Hopefully, they'll go down in flames. Last up, 22-year-old waitress Nikita, who's desperate to stop serving and get cooking. When I was little, I used to pretend that I was a chef in my own kitchen and pretend I was on a cooking show. I think people underestimate you when you're young and don't think you know a lot, and I do, so... Welcome to Humble Pie, everyone. I hope you're ready to play the game. As well as competing against each other, our contestants are cooking for a top chef, but they don't yet know who. Here's the man who's going to be judging your food. Kitchen legend, Marco Pierre White. Welcome, Marco. Hello, ma'am. What advice have you got for these guys? Great cooks, they accept that Mother Nature is the true artist. Great cooks, they give you great insight into the world that they were born into, and they serve it on their plates. OK, and on with round one, a blind challenge. Our chefs have no clue what they'll be asked to make and no chance to practise. Your first challenge is to make a starter of gnocchi and mushroom ragu. One hour is not a long time, but it's long enough to make something delicious. At the end of each round, if no one's eliminated themselves, Marco will kick the worst cook out of the kitchen. Good luck to all of you. Get going. Each chef has the same ingredients, a recipe card that's light on actual detail no measurements or timings, and the knowledge they're cooking for triple Michelin starred Marco. So no pressure, then. When Marco Pear White came out, I was genuinely terrified. <laughs> He's ridiculously intimidating and scary. Believe it or not, ate in one of his restaurants for dinner last night. Hopefully, I can impress him as much as he impressed me. Maybe. With Carl's sales spiel spiralling towards delusion, all the chefs get cracking. I see Carla has already started doing the potatoes. I'm still behind. The gnocchi's a combination of egg yolks, flour and potatoes. Oh, it's not done enough. And their ragu consists of mixed mushrooms, shallots, 
double cream and parsley. So, Marco, how tricky a challenge is this? To make them fluffy, with texture, those little knockies, tough. To cook your mushrooms perfectly and season them, assemble your dish so it's served hot. Timing. Marco is expecting smooth, airy dumplings. I went through a phase of making gnocchi quite a lot. But was it any good? Well, I managed to eat it. <laughs> Using pre-baked potatoes will help create a fluffy gnocchi texture. I may have done gnocchi last week, maybe. Sorry, guys. This round, it goes without saying that the Italian is probably the competition. But the Italian's not getting to everyone. Nikita? Yeah? You're very quiet. I'm quiet, because I'm concentrating. I'm winning. When I was a little kid, my mum used to use cooking as a bribe. Every time I did, like, a line of homework, I'd get to peel a carrot or something. And who lets Carl peel the carrots in his house? You just recently um, celebrated your first year of marriage. I have done, yes. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Do you do most of the cooking? I do, yeah. A, because I enjoy cooking, and yeah. B, probably because I'm the better cook. <laughs> really? How do you feel about it being gnocchi? Have you done it before? I have done. It was successful previously. Hopefully it will be successful this time. I've never made gnocchi before, but you've got to put a bit of a game face on, make it sound to people like you know what you're doing, make sure that they don't have ammunition to attack you with. For anyone else who's new to gnocchi, it starts with a dough... Oh, man. ..that looks like Nikita's, gets rolled like Robbie's, and looks nothing like Ami's. It's not going too well because I don't know what what texture these should be. Totally flummoxed, Ami switched from self-assured top chef to slightly bonkers copycat. Christ, can I have a quick look? OK. Have you lost your kitchen? No, I'm just checking what we're doing next. Oh. Hi, Ami. Hello. I was going to ask you how it's going, but I know oh. you're under a little pressure. Don't you, ask really? me. It's not a good time. I know that you've been round to see... Just to how see it's what do I have to do, yeah. Is that your strategy for this round, to basically yeah. copy the others? It's not copying, because I just need... I need it's a rough guide of what it has to be looking like. I've never ordered it, never tried it. Never so ordered it in a restaurant? Never. I know it's like gooey sort of a pasta. Why would you have that? So I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Well, the I'm Italians love it. <laughs> OK, everybody, we're at the halfway mark, so you've got half an hour left. Carl, uh, how's it going there? Fine. Good. Carl's bluff that he knows his knocky stuff is unnerving his competitors. But really, he's copying Robbie just like Ami is. Only in the style of a master spy. Carl, your gnocchi looks OK. Yours looks all right as well, mate. Oh, thank you. Meanwhile, over in the quiet corner, Nikita seems like she's got gnocchi licked. Your gnocchi looks like you know what you're doing. I've made it a couple of times before. Ah, right. So you're comfortable? I never say I'm comfortable, but I'm quietly comfortable. Where is it? Where the gnocchi? Don't hide it. Come on, where show me. Where show is me, it? where is it? Oh, I lost my gnocchi. <laughs> show it to me. Where is it? It's in the fridge. Oh, do we need to put it in the fridge as well? As soon as Noki rise to the surface of the water, the trick is to count to ten and whip them out. Most people, they overcook them in the water. Most people tend to make them tasteless. They under-season them. How are the gnocchi? The gnocchi are lovely. Yeah? Yeah. Having knocked out their gnocchi, our contestants are busy whipping up their creamy ragu. OK, you've got ten minutes left. Everything has to be finished and done and on the plate. Marco will expect to taste the delicate flavours of dried and fresh mushrooms, seasoned to perfection. And while they frantically cook, Robbie's getting arty. The taste is going to be sorted, so as long as it tastes good, I'm happy to serve it. But Ami's adding chilies and coriander to a recipe that doesn't mention chilies or coriander. With just seconds to go, whose dish will be good enough for Marco? Time up, everyone. That's it. And who will need to use their powers of persuasion to try to stay in the game?
If anyone starts to criticise my food, I know it tastes good, I have faith in it, so you've just got to believe in that. I'm so disappointed with my own dish. At this minute, I'm thinking the competition is kind of over for me. I think the weakest link in this round is, is probably Amy. I think I've done uh, quite well today with the gnocchi. My game plan for the tasting round is just to be confident, and as Amy wasn't so confident, I will be a little bit critical. She might be the target. Still to come. No one is safe. That would sink the Titanic. <laughs> no one can be trusted. Just chew it. Too much past you. Burn. <laughs> Who will be first? He should rest in peace. To leave the kitchen. One of you, press your button. Four amateur chefs cooked, but can they cope with their food being judged? The oven gloves are about to come off. It's time to take it to the table. Two options, admit their dish is the worst, press their button and leave with £100, or stand by their starter and stay in with a chance to land two and a half grand. Leaving it up to Marco to choose the loser who leaves with nothing. So, Marco, what do you think of our gnocchi starters? It's a mixed, mixed bag of good and evil. First, our amateur chefs have to try each other's dishes, starting with gnocchi veteran Robbie. For my taste, I need a little bit more salt. Tasting gives them the chance to work out their place in the competition and unnerve their rivals. It's a little bit oily, but it's quite good. Not quite enough mushroom mini taste, but in general, it does taste pretty good. I like it. It's good. You would do. It's your dish. <laughs> But what will the notoriously tough Marco think? I have certain pet hates. They've put a lot of effort into that, Marco. Now, does that look nicer? You're right. I'm never wrong. <laughs> the gnocchi, not too firm and not too light. They have texture. Nice flavour. The mushrooms are cooked beautifully, seasoned beautifully. It's restaurant quality. Is it? Oh, it's excellent. If I went to my neighbourhood mm. Italian and got this, I'd be over the moon. Next to be judged is Carl. He's blagged his way through the cooking. Will the taste reveal he's a total knocky novice? <laughs> <laughs> the knocky's not quite right. It's very, very, very chewy. <laughs> I think you burned something. I'd say this, you know, there's a little bit of a caramelised onion. When people use caramelised, it's normally another word for burn. <laughs> <laughs> scorched onions. I don't want to try scorched onions. Thank you, though. I'm oh, sorry, I'm just saying, can you change your mind? <laughs> They've overcooked their mushrooms. Now that would sink the Titanic. <laughs> In the kitchen, Ami fell to pieces. Now she needs to hold her knocky nerve. <laughs> it's got a little bit too much chilli in it for me. You can't really disguise a bad dish with lots of chilli. The gnocchi is a write-off, I'm sorry. But I like the mushrooms. I think mine is much better than yours, Carl. Do you now? Yeah. I don't know what this is for. I don't want raw chilli. I don't know why they don't use parsley. Or it's like coriander, yeah. They should have served this one with a catapult. <laughs> Quietly confident Nikita's last to face her critics. The gnocchi is chewy. There's definitely too much parsley in there. It's all stuck in my teeth. I don't think it's as chewy and dough as yours was. Didn't take me as long to chew. Really? That's offensive. It should rest in peace. Now Marco must choose whose dish comes top and bottom. Best dish. Worst dish. Underneath that napkin of death is Nikita's gnocchi. So unless someone presses their button, she will leave with nothing. There's £100 on the table. You've got to decide 
whether you're going to cash out and leave now or trust that you delivered to Marco. There was one dish, it was restaurant quality. Two of you should have served your gnocchi with a catapult. And one starter should never have been served to me. Who should press their button? I'm going to leave you to talk about that, and then you're going to have 20 seconds to make the decision and cash out. The last chance to cause a crisis of confidence. Will Nikita realise it's her time to go, or will the pressure get to one of her rivals? Marco wouldn't have liked the amount of chilli you put in your dish. Mine is not the worst dish, so You're I'm going to You're taking a risk. Stay. You're taking a big risk. If I were you, I'll press the button, pocket the money, go home. I think Carl's running the biggest risk. I think you should take the money and go. Nikita, you should be quicker than, uh, than Ami and press that button. I'm all right, sir. You're, you're running a big risk. Our game-playing chefs now have 20 seconds to decide whether to press that little button. First to press walks away with £100. So will anyone be tempted? I can reveal that none of you decided to cash out. Someone will be going home without any money. The person whose starter was voted the worst by Marco was... Nikita. How do you feel, Nikita? Well, I like my dish. Do you feel like maybe you should have pressed the button? You... No, cos I had confidence in my dish. Well, thank you for being with us. Give us a cuddle, babes. Not gonna lie, quite surprised I've survived the first round. My dish wasn't quite the restaurant standard, but I'm still in the competition and I've still got a chance to win this. If Marco thought that mine was the worst dish in his opinion, then mine was the worst dish. However, I still think I'm a fantastic cook. Well done to the three of you. You're still in with a chance of winning two and a half grand. It's round two, it's the main course, and it's your take on vegetarian. I've tasted your starters, and one thing is obvious. Your ambitions are greater than your talents. If you're going to succeed, then do it by cooking beautifully. Good luck and get going. The rookie cooks have had 48 hours to plan a veggie meal, fit for Marco's professional palate. I'm very confident this is going to be amazing. I've got a good chance of winning. I hope you do better than in the first round. Yeah, definitely. My strategy is going to be to cook great food and make them realise that their food is not as good as mine. Apart from cheese and tomato pizza, I don't think I've ever really eaten vegetarian food. But my palate and my cooking skills are good enough. I can hold my own anyway. So, Marco, they've got to create a vegetarian main. Is that as simple as it sounds? They've got this mass of choice. It's endless, the possibilities. So what I'm looking forward to is a little bit of versatility. Simple as that. Me being an Indian, I'm doing the whole Indian feast, so I'm doing four things to go in the whole main course. Ami's Indian feast consists of meti rice, paneer, puris and special corn on the cob. This round is very different. It's almost like cooking at home. This is easy for me. Well, there must be easy dishes if you're doing four of them. I'm very clever with my cooking. Whilst one is getting ready, I'm on the other. When the other's getting ready, the third one's ready. There's no point of making four if they're not good. I'll cook four main dishes and four to perfection. Oh, we'll see. It's not a thing of men to multitask. I, you shouldn't even try. <laughs> Hopefully, Ami's too busy multitasking to see Carl's burnt pine nuts binned. Hi, Robbie. Hi, Mel. How are you getting on? Everything is going well. The element of vegetarian, does that bother you? As an Italian, vegetarian for us is rabbit. <laughs> I love 
love that. That's it's fantastic. True, true. So, you're an Italian living in the UK. Yep. Have you sort of mixed that up in this recipe a bit? You can call it a fusion dish, cos um, I'm using British ingredients in an Italian dish. Robbie's One Dish Wonder is ravioli with asparagus, taleggio, that's soft cheese to you and me, and a broad bean and pea cream. So, Carl, I see you're roasting some orange stuff. What is it? Orange stuff? You should know what it is. What is it? Butternut squash. What are you doing with it? Putting it into a ravioli. Oh! <laughs> oh! Yep, bravely, Carl's also plumped for the pasta parcels. This time with butternut squash, an asparagus pesto and asparagus tips. How many times have you done ravioli? Plenty. I see you're already doing something wrong there. It's England versus Italy. This could get brutal. Just because it's not your way? There's only one way. Is there? The right way. Robbie can try and get to me as much as he wants, but it ain't gonna happen. Still to come. Tensions rise. Ooh, that's fighting talk, that is. As the lads stick the knife in. You're burning something there, Amy. No, no. It smells caramelised. Both the boys are going to just gang up against me. And another plate is slated. I'm done with this dish. Three amateur chefs have to serve up a vegetarian main course that will stand up to their competitors' critiques and tempt the taste buds of Marc or Pierre White. To take the humble vegetable and make it delicious is not very easy. Ami's making a four-dish Indian feast. Her secret weapon's a cocktail of spices, gently simmered, never boiled, or the taste becomes bitter. You're burning something there, Ami. No, no. Can you smell it now? How beautiful is it? It smells caramelised. Let's take asparagus, for example. To boil it in salted water to perfection is very nice, but you have to take it to another dimension. Robbie and Carl are ravioli rivals. OK, we're at the halfway mark, everyone. You've got 45 minutes left. Robbie's working on his broad bean and pea coolie, and Carl's whizzing his butternut squash filling together with chilies, pine nuts and garlic. Granted, he is Italian, mm. but experience doesn't mean he's better than me. Mamma mia. Hi, Ami. Hi. So, what are your influences in this dish? I'm from India, and you can't get it in restaurants. These are my recipes, which I have created over the years. You moved here, and you've got children, haven't you? You've got yeah, three kids. Got three kids. Yeah, I think this is how I started experimenting, cooking for kids, for my family, and then we do have a lot of dinner parties at home. I know that you think that you're better than probably quite a lot of chefs. It's all my friends and family who just put me at the top, like. We've got friends coming all the way from London. They just come to Essex to just have my sandwich. They're like, please, <laughs> can you have a bit of your delicious chutney or something like that? So it's good enough for Marco, then? Yeah, I think he'll like it, yeah. Boys, I don't want to unnerve you or anything, but Amy's kitchen smells amazing. Spend more time over here, then. I don't like the smell down there. <sighs> if I have to use some hard lies techniques, well, I'll have to do it to win. I prefer this dish. Oh, thanks, mate. But Carl shouldn't get too comfortable. La, 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 la. It's pasta machines at dawn. La, 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 la. It's ravioli rolling time. La, 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 la. <laughs> the trick is to work through the settings on the pasta machine from the thickest to the thinnest until the pasta's nearly transparent. La, 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 la. Robbie's is looking good. La, 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 la. Carl's is looking not so good. La, 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 la. Happy I'm not doing pasta in the final round. I hope he's in the final round, but I think he's you not. You don't hope Robbie's in the final round. No, then. I really want you to be, because then it will be easy for me. Ooh. Oh, that's fighting Ooh. talk, that is. OK, everybody, you've got five minutes left. Perfetto. You still have to cook your ravioli? Yeah, it ain't take a couple Mate, come on, come on. I'm just decorating my plate now. Little does Robbie know, in the last round, Marco hated his pretty plate. You eat with your eyes first. Has anyone created a feast fit for Marco? Time up, everyone. That's it. You can do no more. Or will their dish fall foul? Leaving it down to their wits and tricks to stay in the game. My only plan for the tasting round is to stay strong because I know both the boys are going to just gang up against me. I 
I can spot some uh, faults in the competitors' dishes. Presentation is not the forte. With money at stake, you definitely tell them, even if the food actually is good, but it's pretty rubbish. Got to play the game. It's time to take it to the table. The money's gone up. There's now 200 quid up for grabs, if someone admits their dish is dodgy. Will anyone crack? Will anyone tell the truth? If they won't, Marco will. I dislike flowers in food. This one looks like it was made by a cobbler, sort of leathery <laughs> pasta. This dish may not be the prettiest, but it's the one I want to eat more than the other two. Robbie was raving about his ravioli. Is he alone? Do you feel that your flowers add anything? It's called blossoming ravioli. For me, it was perfect. Perfect, that's strong words. You remember we're playing a game. <laughs> I don't know what these do for it, but they're not going to stay. <laughs> Can't believe you're putting them in your pocket. <laughs> I hate this. Oof. So, I know it's a ravioli, but it's more like a wonton. Quite clever. Now, that's very nice, actually. It eats better than it looks, really. Delicious. I think we should try the other two uh, dishes and, yeah. and see who should be pressing that button. OK. Next plate to be judged is Carl's. The pasta is very dry. If I have to eat that, I need to swallow it down with Coke or something. The flavours are not linked together. The um, pasta around the filling is nice and thin. And it tastes good. I can see by looking at it, it's quite leathery, is that pasta. It's not good. Okay. It's very sweet. And then when you've swallowed it, you've got that burst of garlic. It's too garlicky for me. I'm done with this dish. Last up, Ami's Indian feast. But will it curry favour? All the elements do taste good. I don't know whether the sweet corn goes with the rest of the dish. Presentation-wise, not my cup of tea. That's very nice. Try Is that. It? That's very nice. Mm. Excellent. This individual has a great understanding of spices. That's delicious. It's delicious. I think I'm going to take this to my dressing room. <laughs> Where are you going? Oh, sorry. I haven't no, finished. OK, <clears throat> fine. It's obvious who you think is the best, but could you tell me who's the worst? This one is a shocker. Carl's raviolis ranked as revolting. He should press his button, or he could leave with nothing. The money on the table now is £200. You have to decide whether you've impressed one of the world's greatest chefs or are you going to cash out and leave now? I'm going to recommend that one of you have a very honest conversation with yourself. Press your button. Go home with your tail held high. Does Carl realise he's on Marco's hit list? Make your decision. Or can the salesman convince the others that it's their food that's substandard? Seem like the nerves are getting to you. Do you not think it's best to go with your tail high? No, and because buzz? this was the best, so I'm not going. Who do you think delivered the worst dish? I think Carl. Mine had more depth and layers of flavours. Do you not think your sauce was maybe a little bit creamy, Robbie? Mate, my sauce is ten times better than the lack of the sauce in your dish. OK. If you want to cash out, You've got 20 seconds to press your button. So, I can reveal that none of you decided to cash out. Somebody is going home without any money at all. The person whose dish was judged worst and should have cashed out is Carl. How do you feel, Carl? A bit disappointed, but there we are. It's a game. 
So did you not for one second think you should press the button? Maybe a split second, but there we are. But you've been great. Thank you so much Thank for you. being with us. As for the other two, you're in the final. Well done to you. Thank you. I was lying to Ami. Her food was actually quite good. I was trying to convince her to go because Ami is the toughest competition. I would say it was pretty close between the three of us for getting into the final. Everybody had good dishes, but one of us had to go. Well done, you've made it to the end game, and one of you will be going home with two and a half grand. So for this round, you've got 90 minutes to make your signature desserts. Keep one eye on your dish and one eye on your opponent. Watch for every mistake they make. And when the time's right, remind them of their failings. Your time starts now. I'm really pleased that I'm in the final, but also very nervous. Robbie's really good, so I think his dessert will be fantastic. I'm not worried about Ami. She's shaking, she's nervous. I think that she's gonna mess it up. Our finalists can make any pudding they choose and have had several days to practice. Indian desserts are not everyone's choice, so I didn't want to risk it. This is a South African dessert, malva pudding. Ami's malva pudding is an apricot sponge, which she'll serve alongside a lemon syllabub. Despite her 16 years of cooking confidence, Ami's a pudding virgin. I've never made a dessert before, so I have practiced this four times. Only four times you should do something you're confident with, but hey, good luck to her. Robbie's plumped for Italian favorite, tiramisu. I don't know one person who doesn't like it. That little bit of espresso, that little bit of tia maria, and dust it with the chocolate on top. It's one of my favorites when done well. Well, Robbie's tiramisu has got a little bit of a twist. I'm gonna do a limoncello tiramisu. Robbie's signature tiramisu has lemoncello instead of Tia Maria, an addition of strawberries and no coffee. So, one wonders if indeed it is a tiramisu. I've never seen it on any menu in, in any restaurant in London. In fact, no one in Italy either. Mmm. Oh, it tastes good already. Wow. I've only just started. It's gonna be good, it's gonna be good. Keep it simple, win the competition. Sounds too simple. Oh, she's always the one that tries to make too much. Just focus on one, make it good. He's not happy, me doing two things. I'm done talking. Ami's Malva pudding starts life as a butter, vinegar and milk batter, which is folded to a basic cake base, along with a jam. Malva pudding, the secret is number one, the depth. Number two, the temperature you cook it at. Marco, big Marco, I'm scared. I can see his eyes looking at me and seeing what I'm doing. It's, it's immense pressure. Ami's whipping together her syllabub. It's the acid from the lemon syrup that causes the cream to thicken. But she's not happy with the taste and has chucked it in the bin. Sugar, sugar, sugar. All right, we're at the halfway mark. You've got 45 minutes left. Need any help? Oh. Still to come. If you can't stand the heat... I'm really running out of time right now. ...get out of the kitchen. That looks burned. Which one? And that one. And that. OK, bye. Who will get their just desserts? It's a shocker. It is. Who has just won £2,500? Desserts are not their strong point. The pressure is on as two amateur chefs fight to impress Marco Pierre White and outwit one another. There's two and a half thousand pounds at stake, and it's all down to dessert. Yeah. Robbie's tiramisu with a twist, and Ami's malva sponge with a side of syllabub. I can feel you're under a little bit yeah, of pressure at the, the minute. Whole lemon syllabub again. What happened? It's, it just didn't turn. It didn't taste right. How long does it take? At least an hour. I'm really running out of time right now. Is this music to your ears? I'm it's... not hearing anything. I'm Are concentrating. Sure? I'm concentrating. 
Oh gosh, what's going on now? <laughs> I've used up all my whipping cream and the single cream's not doing what the whipping cream's supposed to do. The single cream won't whip. It doesn't whip. All right, I'm going to leave you to it because you're looking a bit flustered. I don't know the reason why this doesn't work out. While Amy's whipping herself into a frenzy, Robbie's showing us all how it should be done. How are you getting on, Robbie? It's very calm in here. Yes, that's the way it should be. Who said that a, that a dessert has to be complicated? Dessert has to cleanse your palate and send you off. Have you kind of just thought, do you know what? I'm just going to make it simple for myself. Ask a pilot if um, it's easy to fly a plane. He will say yes, because he's been doing it forever. With less than 25 minutes left, it's army versus science, determined that single cream will thicken. Robbie's turning tiramisu into an Italian masterpiece. Army's still whipping away. Oh, God. Army, how's it going there? Not too good. <laughs> Yep, still whipping. One last try, let's see. I'm done with my tiramisu. And the results are in. She's made a drink. I mean, is that your dessert? Yes, that's right. So you're criticizing my tiramisu and you're, show, you're serving shots of whatever Lemon it is? Syllabus. You've got just under 10 minutes to finish this final round, get everything on the plate. The malva pudding is really looking good, and I think it's going to taste amazing. Robbie, you're looking all right? I am done ahead of time. I'm just waiting for the tiramisu in the fridge. But Robbie's never done before he's made his plate all fancy schmancy. And while Robbie's done everything Marco can't bear, Amy's still got to make her malva syrup topping, cool down her puddings, and pray her syllabub has solidified. Oh, I'm actually concerned that I'm done already and you're still working there. That's a lot of dessert. I mean, I've just had dinner, and then I have to eat these. Yeah. God, it's a lot. I need something refreshing. Oh, maybe a limoncello tiramisu. Yeah, that's, that's a great it. Idea. That's what I've done. That's, yeah, a great hello. Idea. that's what I've done. Oh yeah, yeah that's not. A, you wish it was a limoncello tiramisu. That looks burned. Which one? That no, one. it's not burned. And that one. And oh, that. Shush. One. And that. Okay, bye. See you. Should Let I leave you alone? Fill. Yes, please. All right. One minute left, you guys. One minute. Can I come through with my beautiful tiramisu? Yeah, please. Thank you. Taking a mint leaf out of Robbie's book, Amy's done something inexplicable with raspberries. Is that fairy dust? Yeah. It glows when somebody touches the plate. Oh, wow. That's it. Time up. Robbie's so confident when he talks about his dessert. I'm just hoping that his dessert doesn't taste as good as it looks. To be honest, I tried to uh, confuse Amy. I tried to make her life a bit more difficult because I do fear her. Pudding's up. Time to take it to the table. The money's now at 500 pounds, ready for one rookie cook to take home if they're prepared to admit their dish should be dumped. But with a prize fund of two and a half grand at stake, it's game on. These two can't be trusted to tell the truth. But Marco's taste buds never lie. What are these two dishes saying to you? What it tells me is that desserts are not their strong point. And when it comes to presentation, they haven't got a clue. Amy's up first. Am I supposed to drink it or eat yeah, it? drink it like a shot. Her syllabub never set, but will her flavour save her? Sour, very sour, and a lot of sugar in it. Very sweet, but good. Uh, Presentation-wise, it's a bit of a mess. Well, there's a bit too much on the edge of that plate to put in my pocket. Quite delicious, actually. It's sort of homely. It's not restaurant-like. It's sort of comforting. Hmm. Wow, is this a syllabub? Hmm, it doesn't look like one. Now, 
Now, that's way better. Had they just floated their messed up syllabub over the Malva pudding, it would have been quite nice. Oh, yeah, I like that. By pure default, they've made something delicious. But let's not forget one thing. Lots of great dishes were born out of mistakes. Super confident Robbie gave the classic tiramisu a makeover. But will his twist be a hit? Hmm. Oh, I don't like it. Sorry. Why? Because of the limoncello, I think. I'm used to the tiramisu, like tiramisu. Yeah, it's a limoncello tiramisu. Mm. Is it meant to be like this? Oh, yeah. Can I try one more? No. Please? No. I just want to make sure you don't like it. I love it. So this is a tiramisu without coffee and without tear maria. The less I eat, the less I will say. It's a shocker. It is. That took 90 minutes. You must have been bored senseless, <laughs> Melanie Sykes. It's just a trifle, really. It's simple. A child could make it. Whoever made this should just press their button, take their partner out for a nice dinner, where they serve tiramisu. This one, without question, is the loser. So, putting novice armies on course to scoop the two and a half grand, if she can hold her nerve and back off from that button. The money on the table is now £500. You have to decide whether you want to cash out and take that, or trust that your dessert is worth two and a half thousand pounds. One of them was shockingly bad. The other was delicious. Who should press their button? Every round, Robbie's gone all out to convince Ami to cash out. Do you really think that Marco prefers your dessert to mine? Yours was drinkable. Mel said it. If you have any doubts, you should be pressing that button. You should have the doubt. I don't have any doubts. It was just bitter. And like yours, that was too sweet. I, I felt like eating spoons full of sugar. Press the button, go home with some money. Can Ami stick to her pudding guns? Or has Robbie's ribbing cracked her confidence? If she settles for the £500, her £2,500 prize fund becomes Robbie's property. I can tell you that neither of you decided to cash out. Very brave. One of you has made a great decision. But one of you has made a costly mistake. Marco, who has just won two and a half thousand pounds and who goes home with nothing? The winner is... <laughs> Congratulations! Well done, girl. How do you feel, Amy? God, I don't know. Are you shocked? <gasps> yeah. You braved it out, so you must have known it was good. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Tears of happiness are always the sweetest. Well done. Well done to you. Robbie, were you tempted at all to pu push the... No, no. I stick to it. I liked it. I cannot believe my dessert was beaten by Amy's dessert. Thank Congratulations. You so Thank you. Standing brave was wonderful. I'm really, really, really disappointed and annoyed. I should have thought that Marco is a traditionalist. I should have served my good old traditional tiramisu. Winning humble pie is so special to me because my kids, they'll just be so happy that mummy's come home and she's won something and they can proudly go and tell their friends.